It's a balmy one million degrees outside, but that's neither here nor there. Because my LEDs have finally arrived. As I said in the last video, once the LEDs had arrived, I was going to talk some more about what the actual plan for the Voyager lighting is. Now, unfortunately, uh, the LED tape and a couple of my uh, breadboarding bits haven't actually arrived yet, so I can't assemble the test circuit just yet. But I can talk about the, the math and what everything is going to be like. As mentioned previously, I have this diagram of Voyager that, that I've mapped out with all of the various lighting bits indicated upon it. And now that I have all these LEDs, I can see you know, what actual size they are, the sort of size holes that I'm going to have to drill and the sort of spacing that I'm going to have to leave in order to fit them inside the plastic. These are 2mm LEDs, which I can wire up in parallel throughout the, mo the model. And these have got a very tiny little dome for the actual head and a wider base. On the various parts of the model I'm going to drill a hole which is just large enough for the dome to put, poke through. And it should sit just beneath the surface of the plastic and then I can get some micro crystal clear in there. Looking at the plan, Voyager's lighting is broken up into three categories. There's the main cool white lighting, which will just be LED tape in the main saucer and engineering hull. Uh, static LEDs in the nacelles, impulse drive, and on the deflector dish. The, the uh, blue on the nacelles will be tape, and the Im impulse drives and the bizarre, buzzard collectors will be just static reds. And then the third part, these blinking navigational lights, which are spaced as they should be upon the model. These blinking lights are going to be tied to a 555 timer chip, which I'm going to set to about 25% on, 75% off. So that they flash on for just a second and then turn off again, which is the same circuit that I used for my Viper model. I have my Viper model here. As you can see on the wings, I have these LEDs that flash very, very quickly and then are off. And that's done by simply inverting the 555 timer circuit so that rather than it being on for a long time, it actually triggers the, uh, the out of the circuit. Coming back to the plan, at the front I have yellow LEDs for the four navigational lights. I'm going to have green and red LEDs top and bottom of the saucer section for the left and right saucer navigational lights. A single powerful blue LED for the deflector dish, which should uh, light it up nice and brightly. The buzzards and impulse will both be single LEDs, so four there in total. Navigational uh, LEDs on the nacelles and at the rear of the shuttle bay, at the top and bottom. And then LED tape which will run along the nacelles, making sure that it's nice and evenly lit. And as I mentioned earlier, cool white LED tape within the engineering and primary saucer, which will just give a 360 degree spread of light without taking up too much power or space with uh, tons of LEDs. It's going to be driven by a 12 volt transformer, possibly not this particular one here, but this is the one that I have to hand that doesn't already have an end on it, so I'll probably use it. I've gone ahead and done all of the math for the circuitry. So I've got all of the resistors and capacitors that I need. For example, the majority of, of these LEDs run at 20 milliamps and range everywhere from 1.8 up to 3.4 volts. I'm going to be using primarily 470 and 560 ohm resistors to stop them from burning out. And then the majority of things like the 555 timer, the LED strips in the saucer and nacelles are already 12 volt, and so don't require any resistance or an arbitrary resistor at most. Looking at the plan on this page, I'm going to be running several wires in parallel. The main power will come up through the bottom of the engineering hull. This is where the stand uh, usually slots in. I'll expand that and change the base possibly to a pole mount rather than the one that comes in the kit. A main in and out running at 12 volts will come in through that hole, where it will then be split into a static and 555 circuit. Everything on the 555 will have parallel wires going out to the various pieces on the kit, either running out of the back of the saucer section or in from the, the rear of the engineering hole. 
and then the static will simply tie into the LED tapes and the main deflector LED. That means there's going to be lots and lots of wires uh, going up and down the model, but thankfully, unlike with the Colonial Viper, there is a lot of space, because this is a, it's a big model, and there is plenty of room for those small cables to come in and out. If space did become an issue for whatever reason, it wouldn't be too hard to tie so, um, some of these navigational lights onto the same circuit, but I want to try and avoid dimming wherever possible. I'd like them all to flash in sequence, and as, as bright as each other. Finally, I've put together this breadboard. I've got all of my navigation LEDs, the buzzard and nacelle LEDs, the main deflector LED, and the 555 timer circuit. I don't have any of the LED tape that means to power it or any of the jump cables to go with this, as they're still to arrive. But each of these has got the correct resistors placed in line, the correct capacitors for the 555 timing. So once those arrive, it should just be a case of joining it all together, making sure the system doesn't completely blow itself. And then once that's done, I can go ahead and drill the holes for the LEDs. But that's going to do it for this video. That's the plan going forward. And hopefully, with all the pieces coming into place, it won't be that long before you can see some real progress. For now, I'm Raven, and that's all from the desk. It's a balmy one million degrees outside right now, but that's neither here nor there, because...